welcome to the Cosmopolitan Allure channel. I'm Kia and thank you for joining me today. So today's look is for the month of October and the birthstone for this month is opal. So this month, this look for me was very challenging because these are not colors that I would typically wear on myself because they're all considered to be cool colors. So I typically feel more comfortable in colors that are warmer because I feel like they look better on me. So this really for me putting together this look and using only the opal palette from BH Cosmetics because that was my vow that I would only use the eyeshadow, um, the eyeshadows that came in the kit, or excuse me, in the eyeshadow palette on my face with no helper palettes really took me out of my comfort zone. And so I feel like this is a very natural look. It's not over the top. And if you're curious about how I got this look, well, first of all, happy birthday to all of my October babies. If you haven't had anybody wish you happy birthday or if your birthday has already passed, happy birthday. I hope you have or will have a wonderful, happy, healthy, and safe birthday full of love. And I wish you all the best on your day and throughout the rest of the year. So if you're curious to know how I got this look, then please keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial. This is going to be for October, which is for Opal. Um, for primer today, we're going to go ahead and use the Tatcha um, Silk Canvas Liquid. Um, so I have had this primer for a long time. A little definitely goes a long way. Um, it's a primer that I use on my clients. Um, my favorite one used to be the Forsali Skin Blur in the turquoise tube, but um, that was discontinued. So Tatcha has always been like a, a next in line to that one. And there are several ones you can use. You can use the Patrick Ta one. That one is a good one. Um, that one is actually number three on my list. Um, I like the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat um, primer, but that one is luxury, so I tend to use that sparingly and on special occasions. And so I'm just going to let that sit. And then for lip treatment today, I'm still going to continue to use my... Um, I'm going to continue to use my Laneige Lip Mask, and this is Berry. I'm just going to take a Q-tip. And let that sit. And in my other video, I had mentioned doing a um, different technique as far as doing... Um, my eyeshadows and how I do my face where I'm going to do my concealer and contour first and then um, go into my face and everything like that. I think I'm going to keep going on with that method for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my eyes like I did previously. And so I'm going to use the Kosa's Revealer um, Concealer, if this is 6.5, you know, I did not know that this was considered a brightening or excuse me, a day cream as well. So, um, this has multiple benefits to using this. So that's actually very interesting to me. And so I'm just going to take this sponge and dab it into the eye area. And one thing I can say about using concealer on the eye is I do like the fact that it covers up any discoloration that you have on the eye, which I think is key for today's palette Opal because Opal is 
pearlescent or holographic looking in nature. So you really don't want to see any color or discoloration that you may have on your eyes. Um, simply because the color itself is so transparent. It's a mixture of several different colors depending on how the light hits it. So um, yeah, so we'll do that and I'm going to set this time. I'm going to use the one size translucent setting powder and I'm just gonna take a little dusting I'm just going to take this um, BH Cosmetics 141 brush. It's a fluffy brush, and I'm just going to tap into that powder and just rub it over. I actually really like doing my makeup this way, um, which I find shocking. But I find that I move much, much faster when I do my makeup this way. I have no idea why, but it just makes me move much, much faster. <laughs> um, can you believe that it's October? <laughs> the year has gone by so fast. I feel like I can barely keep up at all. All right. And for the star of the show, the BH Cosmetics Opal for October palette. I don't know why I just went into that accent. Um, and I think the color palette on this is very accurate. I have an opal ring that, that my cousin gave me when I was either in high school or college. So that's been over 10, 15 years ago. And I feel like this palette embodies that ring exactly so i think they did a fantastic job with this and when i look at this palette i think it covers every single color in what makes up opal so if you had to pick out the colors individually this would be what you would get now i only I probably know three people that were born in the month of October. So big heart. Um, definitely. Um, I have twin friends that have definitely big hearts and I feel like this color would greatly represent them actually. Um, positive. They were very, very positive. Um, I have another friend who was born in October and um, he was very positive. It's like he let everything roll off his back. He never seemed to get bothered by anything. Um, then personable. I haven't met hardly anybody who didn't like any of these people. They're very, um, very nice, very easygoing folks. And then emotional, that much I can say is true for two of them. The other one, like I said, he never seemed to really express any type of discomfort for the most part other than like oh I don't like that but it's cool but you never know how people really feel on the inside unless they tell you um faithful definitely my two twin friends they were faithful absolutely and daydreamer I don't I don't know that that's a good question I don't know I don't know I don't know <laughs> So I'll go ahead and swatch. So opal. Okay, so I like that. Let me see if I can get closer. You can't really see the shift in it, but when I look at it in person, it has a pink shift. And to me, opal has more of a blue shift, but that could just be because the ring that I've had for years, the cut in which they did just had a shift more for for blue. That is positive. So a very faint pink color. And then big heart. I like that color. 
I think this color is a little bit too strong. This is more of a realistic color for opal, but I like this color better. I'm not a big fan of like light pinks. And in the pan, this looks like a fuchsia pink somewhat, or like a, this pink reminds me of the 80s when I look at this color, but it's so light on the arm. The color is not that strong. So then we'll go in with personable. Okay, excuse me, I like that mint color. And then we have emotional, which is the sky blue color. Yep, that's a true color. Then we have faithful, which is kind of like the muted tone in the bunch. So yeah, you can somewhat see that. That would be almost like a nude color for me. And then Daydreamer. <laughs> I like that. To me, this is like the glitter version of Opal. So in my mind today, I had planned to use Opal over my whole eyelid and eye space. And then to use one of these other colors is like a graphic liner if it would be if it would build up to be pigmented enough to do it um i just don't know <laughs> what color i want to use so while i'm thinking about that i'm just going to take a flat shader brush here and i'm just going to go ahead and pick up the color opal and start putting that on my eyelid here And I don't know if you can see. Let me take my finger here. Okay. So I think that's better. So I think it's reflecting on camera the pink shift that I saw earlier. So I'm just going to take my finger and pack it on. And typically colors like this, I would not wear. Um, I don't feel like colors like this are flattering on me, but I, I like this color. I still don't think it's flattering on me, but I still like the color. So. So I'm just pressing that in, but one of my closest friends in college, her birthday was the last, almost the last day of October. And, and I have a cousin, I forgot, I have a cousin who has a birthday in October. And um, yeah, we all went to college together and they are people who I share some of my dearest college memories with. And um, yeah. I didn't really do anything outrageous in college, though. <laughs> I was one of those quiet college people. Like, I went out to the club and stuff like that, but I didn't get, like, drunk in public or have any, like, stories like that to tell. And so I'm just taking this brush that didn't have anything on it, but, um... But just the translucent powder... I'm just going in and kind of buffing this color in. And I still want to do the eyeliner, but I'm afraid that it's going to take away from this color that we have up here. So I'm still going to try it just to see what it looks like. And if it's, if it's, if it doesn't go, that will then um i'll have to start over <laughs> which is fine because it's only it's very light coloring right now so i'm just gonna take some set and spray i'm using the four in one always an optimist mist by red beauty i haven't used this in a while and i'm just gonna spray my brush here to make it damp because i want it to pick up the color 
that I'm about to put on. Um, I really want to use the mint color. I'm not going to tell a fib, but it was the most pigmented color and I still want the opulent to be the star of the show. So I'm going to try this pink color and see what happens. I like it. I just wish it was more visible on camera. Or maybe you guys are able to see it better than I think you're able to see it. Okay, so maybe if I just build it several times, it will... No, maybe not. Okay, well, we tried. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this same brush, I'm wiping it off, and I'm gonna go into this mint color here. And I'm going to put that up here in the front. Okay, I like that. And then I'm going to take the blue color down here, which was emotional. And I'm going to use that to further push into my lash line down here. This is the color that I think of when I think of opal, to be honest other than the cloudy white color. In my ring, I always saw this blue color the most when I would look at it. And I can honestly say, I feel like I had a Urban Decay palette that had these colors in it but they were more pigmented so this is really reminding me of my college days and i used to wear these colors all the time i used to love wearing color pigmented eyeshadow back then like for me when i would go to the club in college it was about the process of getting ready and getting pretty to go out. I never went to the club with the intent like to meet somebody. It was really just to go and have fun with my friends, if that makes sense. And um, I would have a good time with my friends and I would enjoy myself. So um, yeah, that was my intent when I would go to the club. And so I'm going to take this flat shader brush that I used to put on the opulent color. I'm going to see if I can take that and go over. There we go. Go over the opulence. Excuse me, not opulence. Opal color. And press this in. And I only did a little bit, and I already like how that brings life to it. And I'm just going above my crease.
I feel like I'm in Candyland. Yeah, me and my um, college friend, we were wallflowers. So we weren't dancers. We weren't drinkers. Um, we would just go to the club and she would be my buddy and we would chit chat and talk about things that happened throughout the day while our other friends would drink and dance and have fun. Like, if she wasn't there, I probably wouldn't have had a good time, to be honest, because I'm just not like a club scene type of person. Or I think it's harder for me to adjust to different um, different scenery. Like some people can just blend in. They can adjust in any scene that they go to. And I'm not one of those people. Like if I feel uncomfortable or I'm out of my element, it definitely shows. Even if I don't say anything, my body language will immediately alert somebody when I'm like, this is not it. I'm not feeling it. And um, so I was definitely glad that she was there so I wouldn't be by myself. <laughs> um, so, excuse me. I think that's all I'm going to do to the eyes this time. The colors in here aren't necessarily like bold colors. They're very pastel. I can see the pink and I like it. It's not over the top. It's not super, super dramatic, but because I tried to use a lot of colors in the palette, I think it definitely does make a statement. So I'm going to go in with my Sky High Mascara from Maybelline. I feel like I have been using this tube for the whole year and it's almost out y'all. So I'm just going to put a thin coat. Like I had laid out false lashes for this look, but I'm just going to go with mascara because I know if I put on some false lashes, this color is going to get lost. And as of right now, I can still see the pink liner pinking through. So I'm just going to use this mascara. And even though I've said that Bad Gal Bang was my favorite mascara, I think that it's better to say that's more, it's my favorite, like, um, I don't want to say high-end brand, but non-drugstore brand. Um, and then this Sky High would be my favorite drugstore brand. Like Benefit Cosmetics has only, has been the only mascara brand that I have used the whole tube of. But part of that was because they were one of the few brands that offered like travel size. And so, like I've always said, I don't wear makeup on a daily basis. So, and I should have did my, bot my bottom part. Should have did that last. I forgot I haven't done my base yet, y'all. So I just went ahead and did all my eyes. Well, we'll see how me navigating this will be. And I'm glad I didn't. I don't think the camera is close enough to pick it up, but I have all types of fallout and glitter from this palette all over my face. So I'm just going to take this big fluffy BH Cosmetics brush a 114 and kind of dust I try to dust off the fallout okay that did absolutely nothing <laughs> but move it around on my face um if I had tape handy then I would have went and like removed tape off my face but this is also a test for me to see since I haven't put my base on yet, um, 
how how does this work if I go ahead and put my concealer and stuff on um and I still have glitter on my face will it cover it up or will you still be able to see it through the concealer I feel like that probably depends on the concealer itself but still I'm just curious so I'm just brushing my brows Opal, I feel like, is a very opulent color. And, whoop, and I don't feel like the look I did today was opulent. I feel like it was me being more reminiscent of my college years because of the people that I know with an October birthday. But opal makes me want to be very minimalistic even though i have like one two three four five colors six colors on my eyes if you include the glitter so that wasn't very minimalistic at all but i don't feel like it's what's the word i'm looking for over the top so But that's just me you know you guys out there might be like why does she have 18 colors on her eyes like what's the purpose but I have always liked opal I like the simplicity of it like a lot of people look at opal and be like diamond is better but i'm the total opposite i don't like diamonds i feel like they're overrated and um i've always preferred opal over it and i'm not a person who really believes in like crystal energy and all types of stuff like that but i will say whenever i would wear my opal ring because it's not a ring that i wear all the time but I go through spells of wearing it so I might wear it every day for six months and then when I take it off it goes into my jewelry box and it might be in my jewelry box for two or three years and I'll rediscover it and be like oh why did I stop wearing this and then I'll wear it for a year and then put it in my jewelry box and rediscover it some years later that's always been the pattern with my opal ring and it's very common and soothing for me. I don't know like the meaning behind opal or what the properties are because every stone, every birthstone has um, properties associated with it. So I don't know the properties and I'll look it up and put it down below. But I always felt the sense of peace and a sense of calm and whenever I wore it just by looking at it not that I felt like it was doing anything to me to make me feel that way but just looking at the colors and the the swirls of the swirls of the different colors I don't know it was just common to me that's the best way that I can explain it so um yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and put on another coat of mascara on my top lashes and then after I put on the rest of my makeup I'll go in and do my bottom lashes so because my face is my eyes are not dramatic but dramatic I want to kind of like spot conceal some of my hyperpigmentation today because I want my base to look relatively flawless and so for me, my hyperpigmentation is all up under here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the Kosas and the number seven, which is closer to my complexion. So I originally had this color first. And once I blended it in with my skin, I felt like 
even though it's not the exact same color match, I still felt like for a concealer for it to highlight, it still wasn't bright enough, if that made sense, that I needed a color that was um lighter. So that's why I went to 6.5. And I actually really like it. Um, so yeah, that's what I use. And I'm just going to go here, flip it over. I can honestly say using this method of concealer, I feel like has made me less afraid of concealer. Because if you watch my older videos, and I'm just covering up where I see redness. If you watch some of my old, oh, wrong spot. So now I just have a random concealer mark. Great. If you watch some of my older videos, like I was very light handed on concealer. And I will say that using this method has made me less afraid of concealer because I feel like it helped me see the true potential of what concealer can do. Not that I didn't know, but it was actually visible to me what it can do. So I'm just taking my Sonia Kashuk sponge and I had already filmed a video. So forgive my dirty sponges. And I'm just going to press this into the skin. And the line here is a trend that I saw on Instagram, I think. Yeah, Instagram. Because I don't have TikTok. But I know a lot of people like send me stuff that they see on TikTok. And I see this trend where they're doing the line to lift the face right there. So, um... Yeah, that's where I've seen that before. And I also saw it in Nina Ubi's videos. Um, I talked about her in the September video, how I discovered her on YouTube one day just browsing. I don't remember what I was even looking for that day. And I decided to click on her video. And I was like, why haven't I been following you? And you know, people talk about the youtube algorithm so a lot of times i'm pretty sure it's fantastic people out there who have significant makeup expertise that i know absolutely nothing about because they don't show up in my algorithm okay and I always bring my concealer over on top of my nose. This is um, a tip that I saw from Makeup by Shayla, who, shockingly enough, I think me and her have the same birthday. Um, yeah. So I'm glad that I have this Sonia Cassick sponge with the tip because I feel like I can get right up under my eye without actually messing anything up. And so I'm just gonna go over my nose here. And this helps to like slim your nose down. You don't have to do so much contouring because you already come down your nose and you have like the natural contour of your skin peeking through. So if you're not a person who contours your nose, so to speak with actual contour, you somewhat already have contoured just by leaving your natural skin peeking through. Now we will be going over this with foundation. I think today I realized how amazing concealer is because all of that glitter that I was seeing, I no longer see it. Except for the one on the tip of my nose right there. All right, so for cream concealer, or cream contour today, I'm going to use my Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer. Um, 
I completely forgot there was a cream bronzer in here, so I used concealer. Not con yeah, concealer, the NARS concealer the last time. But I'm just going to use the cream bronzer that's in here and see how that works out. I feel like I've used it before and it wasn't it wasn't like a bad experience or anything, but I'm just I've just never been a fan of cream contour like that just because I wasn't used to it. It's nothing wrong with it. I just wasn't used to using cream contour before. So So this method forces me to get more familiar with it <laughs> um, because you typically use cream to contour in this under painting way. And so I'm just pushing that back into my hairline. And I was scared it was going to be too dark, but it certainly warms up on the skin. And I'm just moving it upward. Is it just me or did it disappear? add some more I don't want to go overboard and then it looks muddy so I'm just pouncing it pounce 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 Maybe it's just me. I don't feel like I can see it. And I think in my mind, I'm always thinking contour has to be like super noticeable, super dark and whatever, but I don't know. Attempt to know. So I'm just going to do a little tick right here. I'm not a person who likes heavy nose contour, so I literally just did like the tiniest dot there. And I'm literally taking the point on this and blending that in. Oh, wow. Now, this certainly made a difference on my nose. A little bobble here at the end. I literally just dip the tip in to create that little button right there. Yeah, I can certainly tell the difference on my nose. And then the jawline. All right, and so now I'm going to go in with foundation, and I will be using the LYS Triple Fix Foundation in the color TN6, which is honey, and I'm just shaking it because it says to shake well, and I'm just going to drop it on the back of my hand, and I'm only going to use one pump. Because I don't feel like I need like a lot and I'm just blending it out on my hand and I'm just going to start at the top and pounce into the skin. Pick up some more.
And I'm always fascinated by this method. This is my second time trying it. And this method is so fascinating to me because since your foundation is darker than concealer, I would imagine that when you put this on your face, it will automatically make your concealer disappear and it doesn't. I feel like, oh, oh no. I got foundation on my lash line up here. <laughs> That's okay. We knew that that was a possibility, so. But you definitely use way less foundation this way. Like literally all of that's been wiped off and pressed into the skin. I'm sure that the sponge absorbed some of it. But I've all already looked how like how more uniform my face looks. And even up under my eyes, even though I put foundation over it, I can still see the brightness of the concealer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the other side of my sponge and just go right up under here. Look up. And I'm going to go in and set this space here. And this is to prevent creasing. Now for me, I really don't see too much creasing on me. Um, so to speak, I feel like that's more um and i didn't re-wet my sponge um where's my product and so people tend to use um like loose setting powder to set that area i like i like the oops sorry i didn't mean to blind you i like using the pressed powder personally I mean, everybody has their own personal preference. I don't feel like for me, well, I can see a, a bigger difference with the pressed powder. And it could just be this LYS. Because I think this is the only actual pressed powder that I have. Everything else I have is a loose powder. And I see a difference with the loose powder. But I feel like I see a bigger difference with the pressed powder. And I like the way the pressed powder looks better. The loose powder is fine, but I personally prefer this look better. And I don't know if it's the color, but I just like the consistency better with this. Okay. Then going back into the Patrick tie, I'm going to use the powder this time where we use the cream up under the foundation. And I'm just going to use my Fenty Beauty 190 bronzer brush to, excuse me, my nose is itching, to go in and pick up the bronzer. Yeah, I just love this brush. I feel like this saves me from a multitude of mistakes. just because of the shape of it. 
Like, I feel like I can do no wrong with this brush because it's meant to hug your cheek. And I feel like it's so hard for me to see it on myself. I can see other people's cheekbones just fine. But when it comes to my own, it's like, if I don't make the little fish face, I can't, <laughs> I can't find my own, my own cheekbones. I think that's crazy, but it's the truth. All right. I'm just going to blend up here around the perimeter of my hairline. I feel just like I look so put together and I love it. To me, doing my makeup this way almost alleviates the need for me to go over my full face with a setting powder. And I typically use the Kosa's Pillowy um, Cloud Set. Well, the color Pillowy, but the Cloud Set. And I feel like when I do it this way, this step right here almost becomes obsolete. Because... I don't know and I never understood when I would watch YouTubers and like why do they go in and do cream products first and then go over it like that just seems like a lot but you can tell the difference in how your makeup comes out it makes a significant difference it definitely makes a significant difference and so I'm not going to set my face. I'm not going anywhere today. And I have to film another video after this. So I don't want to make this makeup harder to take off since I have to film after. All right. So now I'm just going to go back into the opal palette that we had down there. And I'm going to refresh the colors. So I'm just going to go back into the mint green here. And I think the mint green is actually okay. I'm going to go back into the blue, which kind of got lost. Due to concealer. <laughs> and as you all know, I typically don't um, do eyeliner in my waterline that often is very irritating to my eye. And I find, honestly, putting eyeshadows up under your eye somewhat almost has the same effect. So, oh, okay, this came out very electric this time and I think that's because the concealer is on there so, so ooh, okay I probably should have put the blue on top and the pink on the bottom so I'll just refresh this as well I wasn't going to but might as well refresh everything down here let me see if I can get the pink going on. And I'm actually going to use the color positive as a blush. So. Okay, I feel like everything is coming through. Maybe. The top of this just had, I won't say hard pan, but, or maybe it's just because I'm putting more layers on it. I don't know. The colors seem to be coming through better now. And I'm just fine with that. 
All right. And then going back in with mascara. Because the first coat got dusted. Okay. I actually like that much better after my whole face is put together. I like this look. It's something I have legitimately never done in these colors. Like I've had this color scheme before with a Urban Decay palette, but they were all like electric colors. So the color payoff was 10 times more vibrant than this, but this is like a, a more pastel version. So I'm just gonna go into the color positive with, um, with a BH Cosmetics. This is my Ray Ray number three. And I'm just going to use that color as a blush. I don't think I own any colors that are this color pink. So it's a cool pink, it's not warm. And I have a tendency to buy blushes that are much more warm because I think they're more fitting. They look, I feel more comfortable with those on my skin tone, but I don't think this looks too bad. I don't, I don't want to run the risk of looking um, washed out because the pink color isn't, you know, it's not flattering, but this isn't too bad. And because opal is so delicate of a color um it's more like a flush or a wash of color i don't want to put any lip color on today so i'm just gonna wear lip gloss so i'm just going to wipe off the treatment the lip treatment and I'm just gonna go in with, I had laid the color out, okay. So I'm gonna go in with the Fenty, with the Fenty Gloss Balm in the color Pretty Please, which is this super pink color with glitter in it. And I don't think I've ever worn this color. And this is going to be my lip color. Oh, I like the way it smells. Yep. All right. This is honestly, without a doubt, <laughs> the first time I've ever done a look like this. And I'm not mad about it. I wouldn't wear it often, but I definitely would be more inclined to wear it because I would never put these colors on together. So that's one of the things I like about these palettes is because I made an oath to myself that I would only use the colors in the palettes. I wouldn't use any helper colors or anything. I would make all my looks with the palette colors and I would use the glitter color in every single palette. So I have done that. Um, I think this is the first time I actually used the glitter color as an eyeshadow. So I feel like this pushed me to expand my makeup looks. Um, and I feel like this is probably the first time I have used so many colors. I used opal. I used the positive, which is pink. I used the emotional, which was blue. I used the mint green, which I don't remember what personable. And then I used the glitter color, which was Daydreamer. So I only did not use one color in the palette, which was Faithful. And that's a color that I feel like I've seen in other palettes throughout the months. And a color that I would pick up on my own naturally because it's the more nude 
color for me. So I really pushed my boundaries on this and created something that I have never created before or used so many colors to create an eye look. So I'm thankful for that and I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I wasn't sure when I got this palette. I thought it was very a very well curated palette because it was an honest representation of the colors that appear in an opal stone or crystal. And so I thought they did a really good job with it, but I didn't know how I was going to come up with a makeup look, but I'm actually proud of myself. So for using so many colors and doing something out the box for me. So with that being said, I'll be back with the final look. Okay. I am back. So this is the final look. I didn't have any opal earrings, so this is the closest that I could get to, but um, I have my little holographic closest thing that I could find to opal. But yeah, this is the final look, you guys. It's not over the top. It's a lot going on on the eyes, but it's so subtle that you, from afar, you might not be able to pick up every single thing. But I still really like the way that this came out and for me this is my second favorite look of the year so far my favorite one was March because I pushed myself to create a look that I had never created before and this look for me is the same thing while it doesn't look like a lot is going on for me this really pushed the boundaries for me as a makeup artist and I think that's important when you are a makeup artist everybody has their own preference when they do their own makeup what they like on themselves but as a freelance makeup artist I have to push myself to try different things that I don't necessarily like so if I have a client who wants it I've practiced it and I'm familiar with it and for me, this is one of those looks where, like I said previously or earlier in the film, I would never wear any of these colors on myself ever. I've had them in palettes and have skipped over them because I didn't like the way that they looked. And for me to have put together this look using colors that I never wear, and I like how it came out, came out. For me, there's such a feeling of pride that I feel for myself for pushing the boundaries and doing something that I'm not comfortable with. And had it not have been for the New Year's resolution that I gave myself last year on December 31st that I was going to do a makeup look for every birthstone, I would have never done this. I would have never done this on my own. So I feel like it's confirmation closer to the end of the year that this is what I should be doing and that sticking to my guns and making a video for each birthstone palette just gets confirmed over and over again. So um, to anybody who has a birthday in October, to the people who created these birthstone charts and whatnot, thank you. And happy birthday to all my October babies out there. Um, if you haven't had your birthday yet or if it's already gone by, if nobody has told you happy birthday and that they're wishing you happiness, love, and health and safety away, happy birthday. I'm wishing you happiness, love, and safety and health your way. Um, thank you to everybody who has stuck with me this far and supported this channel and watched the videos, giving me words of encouragement. And um, please like and subscribe if you have any suggestions um, or any type of other content that you would like me to film, please let me know. But yeah, that's today's final look. So that's a wrap, you guys. Until next month, I will see you in November. Take care and stay safe. Bye.